tis the season to be podcasting. Stay inside with a warm beverage and a hot microphone. If you're interested, Spotify can help you out. They've got a platform that lets you make one, distribute it, and earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer. So you've already got the equipment necessary to start recording today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify, Apple, Google, and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. And when you want to take conversations with your fans to the next level, Q&A and polls are an excellent way to get them talking. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. Best of all, it's completely free. I switched dorky, geeky, nerdy over to Spotify for Podcasters, and I haven't regretted it. The analytics are fantastic, and the new tools for hosting and updating the feed are way more than I could do self-hosting. Now, it's your turn. Head to podcasters.spotify.com and read all about it. Then, let me know what you're podcasting all about. From the observatory to the conservatory. Hi there, I'm Brian Rollins, and this is the Dorky, Geeky, Nerdy Trivia Podcast. This week we're covering the fine arts. It's a broad category that covers painting, sculpting, architecture, literature, and music. Future episodes will dive deeper into each section, but for now we're just doing an overview. As always, we'll have three rounds of 10 questions each. I'll give you the question, then a short timer, then I'll read the answer. Simple and fun, right? If you need rules on scoring, you can visit dorkygeekynerdy.com slash rules. Books open, and let's begin. The Dorky Round Number 1. What artist famously opined, in the future, everyone will be world famous for 15 minutes? Andy Warhol. Number two. The Italian word piano translates into what in English? Soft. Number three. What architect pioneered the prairie school movement? Frank Lloyd Wright. Number four. Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo, a.k.a. the Ninja Turtles, were all artists from what period? The Italian Renaissance. Number five. While a flourishing industry today, what Japanese art form had been largely banned in 1787? Manga Number 6. Often attached to mosques, what is the name for the tall towers that are used for a call to prayer and act as a visual focal point. Minarets. The tall spires typically have conical or onion-shaped tops. Number 7. While the English horn is a woodwind, the French horn is part of what instrument group?
It's a brass instrument. Number eight. In art, what is the term for the area around and between the subjects of an image? Negative space. Number nine. What Victorian poet wrote, "How do I love thee? Let me count the ways." Elizabeth Browning. Number ten. Born in 1924, what writer was famous for the novella Breakfast at Tiffany's and the novel In Cold Blood? Truman Capote. The Geeky Round. Number one, what American abstract expressionist called his work quote, "motion made visible memories arrested in space." End quote. Jackson Pollock. Number two, what art movement, named for a work by Claude Monet, is characterized by relatively thin, small yet visible brushstrokes, open composition, and an emphasis on accurate depiction of light? Impressionism. Number three. The art of decorating initials, margins, and illustrations in manuscripts is known as what? Illumination. Number four, weighing thirteen thousand two hundred seventy-one kilograms, and named Emmanuel. This musical instrument is the largest in what group? The bells of Notre Dame. It rings in F sharp. The smallest, Jean Marie, weighs 782 kilograms and rings in A sharp. Number five. Frederick Auguste Bartholdi is best known for what sculpture? Liberty enlightening the world, or more commonly known as the Statue of Liberty. Number six. In Japanese, what is sometimes translated as the art of singing and dancing, and is known for its elaborate makeup. Kabuki. It dates back to 1603. Number seven. What poet wrote, "Resist much, obey little." Walt Whitman. Number eight. What is the name of a scale using only five notes? A pentatonic scale. Number nine. When I do count the clock that tells the time. Is an example of what type of metric line? Iambic pentameter. Number ten, carved by the Rapa Nui people, 
What is the name of the monolithic human statues on Easter Island? Moai. The Nerdy Round. Number one, encompassing architecture, music, painting, and sculpture, what 17th and 18th century art style derives its name from the Portuguese word for flawed pearl? Baroque. Number two. What is the term for an individual piece used to create a mosaic? A tessera. Number three. What is the name for a piece of art, usually a panel painting, that is divided into three parts? A triptych. Number four. What dolls, made by the Hopi and Zunai tribes, were made to represent masked impersonators and dancers? Kachina dolls. Number five. What large artwork was stolen by Nazi Germany in 1942 from St. Bavo's Cathedral in Belgium? The Ghent Altarpiece. It was the focal point of the book and the movie The Monuments Men. Number 6. Johann Sebastian Bach's brother, Jakob, was known for playing what double reed woodwind instrument? The oboe. Number seven. In 1982, King Juan Carlos of Spain bestowed the title of Marquis on what artist? Salvador Dali. Number eight. Winning a Nobel Prize in Literature in 1946, which author wrote the novels Siddhartha and The Glass Bead Game? Hermann Hess. Number 9. What composer had his first work, The Old Cat and the Young Mouse, published in 1920? Aaron Copeland. Number 10. Louise Bogan was the first woman to hold what position that is currently held by Tracy K. Smith. U.S. Poet Laureate. And that's the bell class. I hope you had fun. Like I said before, we'll be coming back to these individual topics later on in the show. Speaking of which, here's next week's clue. Which science fiction series, which launched in 1993, was famous for the tagline, The Truth is Out There. Our book of the week is Leonardo da Vinci, A Life from Beginning to End. Da Vinci was a painter, sculptor, inventor, and so much more. Be sure to read all about his life and his works. You can find a link to this and other books of the week over at dorkygeekynerdy.com slash book. By getting this book and any of the others, you help keep the mic on and the show going. 
Speaking of keeping the show going, be sure to rate us on the podcast directory of your choice. It really helps spread the word. I'm your host, Brian Rollins. Thanks for listening.